Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Thursday, March the 3rd, and I had a viewer that asked me to do a video, so I'm going to dedicate this one to Lindsay. What was Meghan Markle's reasoning for wearing matching color red to the Royal Marines event, and was it wrong? want to welcome you all to my channel. Thank you for my new subscribers and for anyone who's been recommending my channel. I appreciate it. Here's my disclaimer. You can also find it in the description. Now let's get into it. Let's move back and let me, excuse me for scrolling up a minute. All right. So of course she had a Vanity Fair article. It said the symbolic significance, here Pearl, of Harry and Meghan's matching red outfits. The prince wore his Royal Marines officer jacket for what might be the last, and his wife took the opportunity to match him perfectly. And of course, here's Harry making sure that Meghan doesn't trip in her shoes that are too big because of her bunions. And this was on March 7th, 2020, and published on the 8th. How considerate he always is. Prince Harry's days with the British Royal uh, British military uh, came to an end. As part of the deal, he and Meghan Markle struck with the Queen that will allow them to live in North America, step down from senior royal duties. Harry will give up all of his honorary military appointments for at least a year. And then we know at the end of that first year, March a year ago, that um, they said because of the pandemic that they would like to have another year to get situated and see how it goes and have a review at the end of that, which is coming up. And I know that there's rumors in the uh, uh, the press that, uh, and one of the royal um, authors had said that they thought that Meghan and Harry were going to want to come back and be half in, half out. Well, that was a no. And then uh, they said that maybe after Prince Charles takes the throne, that he might possibly allow that. And I don't believe that's going to be the case. I think he has enough sense to know and read the room that um, the people in uh, the UK do not want him back as well as around the world. But let's move on. Let's get into this. That support was a um, clear display on Saturday night in London at Mountbatten Music Festival, a fundraiser for the Royal Marines Association where he wore his red his formal red military uniform for what might be the last time in public. Megan matched in a cape gown by Safaria and Stuart Weissman pumps and a Manola Blonic clutch. And of course, I heard in other areas that um, the dress was actually $3,000. The Royal Marines officer's mess jacket is a formal version of what has become a familiar sight, even for casual royal watchers. So, uh, if this was the last chance that Meghan had to match Harry in a formal red look of her own, she certainly made the most of it. Now, we don't know um, if she chose that because she wanted to upstage him. We don't know if uh, she wore it because she thought, uh, oh, we'll just look good. And she wanted those last few events when they came back at the end of March before their year in ends and before Mexit began. If um, she just wanted to, you know, look really good and and be on all the uh the headlines so as they made their way into the royal albert hall where the bbc reports they received a standing ovation as they took their seats now i know i remember seeing things that said that um the royal marines had already began playing and that harry and Meghan had arrived late and that people were actually clapping for the band for um the song that they had just played and that Megan and Harry came in confused and were up, you know, didn't know. And Harry thought he was getting a standing ovation and he may have been because I can only find in the headlines where it said that he was. So unless somebody was in attendance or um, knows or can find anything in an article, I don't know what else to think. So I'll have to leave it up to you all to um, tell me what you think. Harry and Meghan received standing ovation at the Royal Albert Hall, and this was in The Guardian. Then in ITV, standing ovation for Harry and Meghan at one of the final events before leaving. And then the Insider.com, Meghan and Harry wore red to one of their final events. Um, then it says, um, let's see, gosh, we've got CBS News. Um, just talking about the final event, independent.co.uk, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle given standing ovation at Royal Marines event. And then um, 
The Daily Mail says Meghan Markle and Harry get a standing ovation as he wears his dress uniform in final engagement as Captain General of the Royal Marines, and they uh, post sweet snap from their farewell tour, except for the very last one in the car, and I've included that. A few of the comments on that Daily Mail article said, um, again, with one of these horrible cape dresses, I wish you'd stop wearing those. Um, Potamus one, let's hope it is farewell, yet somehow I feel it may not be, laugh out loud. Um, gee whiz, guess me again, didn't get the memo on how military spouses were supposed to dress at formal affairs. And then Sparky Sue says, fake, fake, fake. Amanda Cox, no, Harry got a standing ovation due to his rank and Megan just happened to be there. I know she was smiling like it was for both of them. And uh, whether they were doing that, other people feel like it was because of his rank and it was the polite thing to do. True Brit says, a captain of Marines off selling voiceovers to Disney instead of attending a victim's memorial and getting a standing ovation. Question. Cruy says, probably all ordered by commanding officers to stand up and applaud or to receive a court martial. <laughs> it could have been. Um, uh, perhaps that photo in the car leaving the Royal Albert Hall should be the real goodbye portrait, not in signing or not <laughs> the one singing in the rain snap. What a contrast. As the bard said, all in the world stage and all the men and women merely players sigh. So it says the Duke and Duchess of Sussex received a long round of applause and a standing ovation uh, from the audience in the Royal Albert Hall in London as they took their seats uh, at the Mountbatten Music Festival. And I think it's a shame that they arrived late, but I guess uh, Meghan probably wanted to make a grand entrance, right? You can see Harry's kind of looking down. I think he gets a bit emotional here. And um, in the video, it shows Megan grabbing his elbow, trying to sit down, and he has to whisper to her that, uh, you know, no, we have to stand. This is for us. Of course, she knows no social cues. The Sussex receiving the standing ovation from their position in the royal box. And you see Megan smiling. It's funny to look at the faces of the man standing next to Harry's right and the people behind that are whispering. And um, I think this was just done out of respect for the royal family and not for Harry because who could respect um, a military officer that deserted his majesty and uh, country? That's just another view. And again, I think this is where Harry's eyes started welling up. And there's Megan smiling like a proud peacock. And the final time that the Duke will go on an engagement in his official Royal Marines capacity, having inherited the rank of Captain General from his 98-year-old grandfather, Prince Philip, in 2018. Or excuse me, 2017. And of course, then he leaves just over a year after that. And, oh, and remember, um, you know, when he wanted to um, wear his uh, military outfit and along with uh, um, Andrew for the, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh's uh, funeral, I thought that was just disgusting. And the Queen finally had to step in and say, nobody's wearing theirs. This intimate picture of the Sussexes about to attend their seats in the royal box was shared on the couple's Instagram page. Well, good for them. Again, it just goes on to say they got a standing ovation and they were singing hits from like Sir Tom Jones. The festival brings together world-class musicians, composers, and conductors on the massed bands of the Royal Marines. Proceeds, and I think this is important, go to the event of the Royal Marines Association and the Royal Marines Charity and CLIC Sergeant who support cancer victims aged under 25 and their families. Of course, there's Megan hamming it up. This was in between the intermissions when they stepped down to say hello and walk backstage for a moment. And then I'm sure after it was over, Megan couldn't get out of there fast enough. And it says that the Albert Hall performance marks the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, and it was the 80th anniversary of the formation of Britain's uh, commandos. 
And this was when Harry was waving goodbye as he and Meghan uh, leave following their attendance. And then you can see him kind of saying goodbye again. I think he's a little emotional here. And then we have this. As soon as they get in the car and through the um, shaded windows, Megan doesn't think that anybody can see her. And look at the face. The mask comes down, how she's staring out at the people. And Harry's just looking out thinking, have I just made the biggest mistake in my life? I'm walking away for something that I am so proud of. And Megan's like, let's just get out of here. I just came for the uh, the press. Let's get to America. I could care less about the UK or the Royal Marines. Now, this is as they were arriving. Harry's looking down to make sure she doesn't get her um, stiletto heels stuck in one of the little manhole things that are on the ground beside of him. And how she's got her hand on his elbow directing him again. Harry's looking down. Look at this body language. Here's Megan. She's just looking for the cameras, smiling and posing, and Harry's looking back at her like, can we just get in already? We're already late. We're holding this up. The couple pictured here, um, it says, have decided to leave Archie in Canada, meaning that the British royals haven't seen little Archie for more than four months, and the queen was believed to be very b sad at this. Of course she was. They're using him as emotional blackmail. Now, as far as whether or not her wearing the red was um, proper etiquette or not, I went on one of the U.S. sites, and it's talking about coordinating colors for military um, events and affairs. Many people match their dress to the service member's uniform, and the Army can end up in a room full of blue or gold dresses, while the Marine Corps ball is full of black or red gowns. So, I guess it's okay in U.S. Now, I dated a gentleman who was an officer in the military. He was a uh, F-16 fighter pilot, and we attended lots of um, events, banquets, um, ceremonies, and um, uh, balls, and I never tried to uh, match the outfit. I didn't think that that was appropriate. I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, wearing what I thought would be appropriate um, dress attire, but of course, everybody's different, and we know Megan likes to stand out. I even looked on the military or Ministry of Defense about all of the uh, requirements and the dress codes, and I couldn't find anything about, you know, the wives or guests that were in attendance, just what they should wear. Now, I bring this up about Harry's military career because it said he served in the Army for 10 years, rising to the rank of captain, undertaking two tours in Afghanistan, and he continues to work in support of his fellow servicemen. Yeah, right, Harry. But here's the part that interests me. It says that Prince Harry passed his regular commissions board the qualification necessary to train at Sandhurst in September of 2004. It goes on to say the RCB enables senior Army assessors to find those best suited for training. The board is demanding, and it consists of a number of tests and tasks designed to assess mental physical, and emotional aptitude. Why didn't something come up? Did he actually pass his um, assessment test? Did anything come up about his mental and emotional fitness? I I'm just wondering, or was he put through because of who he was? And then it just says that during the 44-week training course in Camberley, Surrey, Prince Harry was known as Officer Cadet Wells. The course is highly demanding and involves both theory and tough physical training. Then on the 25th of January, 2006, Clarence House announced that Prince Harry was to join the Blue and Royals. Following the successful completion of the course, Prince Harry was commissioned as an Army officer on Wednesday the 12th. Uh, April of 2006, and the Queen, accompanied by the Duke of Edinburgh, took the salute at the Sovereign's Parade at the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Now, something that may be different in the UK is uh, the only way you're going in as a officer in the military in the United States is if you um, have a four-year college university degree and um, that's the only way you'll step in, and then you apply for officer's training and then get accepted in. 
Now, that's my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But it seems as though Harry didn't need that and was able to step in. I don't know. You guys tell me, was it because he was royal? For colors, I recommend going. And this was um, some of the other people who are military wives, and they talk about how to dress for these events. And uh, it says they recommend going for something that complements the service men or members. Dress uniform, deep reds, emerald greens, and dark purples are good options. You can also go for neutral tones like tan, matte, gold, or silver. Just avoid any sparkling sequins in black. So it says, you know, don't wear black. So anyway, uh, so this kind of, uh, again, is from a, an American viewpoint. And, of course, long dresses and, you know, you should have your self covered. Uh, you want to dress modest and you shouldn't have your shoulders um, exposed. So uh, it says the uniform and insignia worn by the Captain General are those of a Royal Marines, Colonel, or higher, depending on the appointee's current or previously held rank. And then it goes on to say, what is their motto? Per mayor, portium, and uh, let's see. Just some of the other uh, things that they're called, nicknames. What does the Captain General of the Royal Marines do? The role of Captain General of the Royal Marines is the ceremonial head of the Royal Marines, whereas the Commandant General is the professional head, which comes with the rank Major General. So Harry wears the same uniforms as then, but again, he's just there for ceremonies and things like that. That's really his only duty. Now, uh, because Lindsay wanted to know, and Lindsay had mentioned, and I'll show you a little bit of our messages in just a moment um, about them taking an oath. Well, I found different things that kind of contradicted one another, but I'm going to go with this. The British Monarchist League. It says, Her Majesty's Armed Forces. The Queen as Sovereign is head of the armed forces. She is also the wife, mother, and grandmother of individuals either having served or currently serving in the armed forces. The Queen is the only person to declare war and peace. This dates back from when the monarch was responsible for raising, maintaining, and equipping the army and navy. Today, this power can only be exercised on the advice of its ministers, and we know Parliament and the Prime Minister, on enlistment to the Army and Air Force Acts require members of the Army, Royal Air Force, and Royal Marines to take an oath of allegiance to the monarchy as head of the armed forces. Now, something I found interesting at the bottom, members of the Royal Navy have never been required to swear an oath. The service was formed hundreds of years ago and its existing stems from the sovereign's pejorative. So I thought that was, you know, kind of unusual that the Navy didn't have to do it. So Harry swore an oath to his grandmother, to um, the armed forces, to Her Majesty the Queen, and to um, everyone that he would um, be there, that he would serve, that he would do his duty. And we feel like he's traitors. He's a traitor because he left. He just up and walked away from this because he wanted to please his wife, because she said that she couldn't live there anymore, that um, she was going back to America. And of course, if he has a child with her, um, I, like most husbands, I guess he thought, well, let's give it a try because she's certainly not happy here. At least that's just my viewpoint. But um, you guys tell me. So I was talking to M Tree 17 on Getter, and I blanked out some of the stuff. But she said, Moon, you know what I think would make a great video? The last engagement at the Mountbatten Festival of Music where the band of Royal Marines played as she wore a red dress to match his mask jacket. With every... British military wife knows you do not compete with the peacocking of the military uniforms. And to me, that sounds logical, and I can respect that. It's like you're trying to go in some sort of unofficial uniform by matching theirs. Probably, she said, it's probably the same in the U.S. So in looking at the sites and other people that I've talked to, it's, um, you can do that. It's not, um, recommended, but it's, I guess it's not against etiquette. But uh, again, this video is for Lindsay. 
The convention is that the uniform itself is the star when it is the dress mesh uniform as he was wearing. It is supposed to shine as it usually does. In Britain convention, tradition, it is the uniform. Oh, sorry. That should stand out. So, and I've just included um, just a few seconds of a couple of songs that um, were on here that I can use free from um, YouTube. And this was um, Heart of Oak, I believe. <laughs> Okay, and now let's uh, continue on. So, uh, it's up to you guys. I need your help. So, if um, this is the video where I need your help in determining whether Megan's dress was inappropriate because she wanted to upstage Harry or because, as Lindsay writes, she feels that it's the uniform of the military um, person that should stand out. So, leave your comments. Let us know what you think. And again, I want to thank Lindsay for um, reaching out to me and telling me that um, she thought this would be a good video. I agree, and I appreciate that. Sometimes when we're um, creators or making videos, we will go with whatever is current in the news and then um, kind of forget about some of the events that have already passed and can go back and look at those and um, take a different look at them, so to speak. So, Lindsay, thank you very much, dear. And if anybody else would like to make a suggestion to me, please do that in the comments. Thank you all for joining me today. I appreciate you taking time out of your day um, to watch the video. And I hope that you will like and subscribe and leave your comment. Thank you again, everyone.